Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video what we're going to talk about is foliage and trees. So the foliage is from Quixel Megascans. The trees are for somewhere, from somewhere else because when I looked into the whole database I could find like separate trunks and atlases for leaves and stuff but you have to assemble those into a separate 3D program and the goal of this series of tutorials is that we could do everything with the mega scans inside Unreal and get awesome looking levels. So let's talk about foliage first. And for the foliage, you can use the foliage that's already inside uh, Quixel mega scans. And if you go into bridge, you just have to check on 3D plants, grass, and you'll find a bunch of little types of grass that you could download. If I go back to 3D plants, this is actually what I have downloaded. I have downloaded a bunch of plants and I just import the ones that I liked into Unreal and that's how I use them. So let's talk about that first before we talk about the trees. So once you get your foliage into Unreal Engine, let me get out of this camera mode uh, so we can use like a unclean, like a clean patch of land. So we can go into the mega scans. Once you import your plants into Unreal Engine, you're gonna have a 3D plants folder and you're going to have a bunch of folders as well if you've imported more than just one type of asset. Now, let's say I go here into the grass clump. In here, you're going to see that you have three different types of grass. I'm going to bring them all here. So we have one, two, and three. So these are actually three different types of grass. And the purpose of it is so you can have variation when you are using the grass. So I'm going to undo that. And you can add them as a clump. So if you want to add the full clump, you just select all of them and just drop them down like this. And you can Alt and do this if you wanted to. And you have a little patch of grass over here. Now, doing this, doing foliage manually is very painful and very hard when you're doing it on an exterior, like on an outdoor scenes like I have here. But if you are doing an interior scene, placing it by hand is probably the way to go because you can exactly select uh, where you want those. But I'm going to show you the other way to add foliage, which is using the foliage tool that's here in Unreal Engine. So we go here to modes, we go here to foliage, now you can see that I have a bunch of foliage here and usually as soon as you import a foliage piece from Quixel Bridge, it will instantly be here. If it's not here, all you have to do is drag and drop foliage type. Okay. It's that easy. Now, once you have your foliage here, you have to select what type of foliage you want to draw with. I have the trees here. And like I said, this tool is pretty automatic most of the time. These trees, I just brought them in and I didn't even have to drag them in here. They're all already in here once I fire the tool. And uh, that that's how it works. If it's not there, just grab it from, from the content browser. Now, the way that we're going to do things is I'm actually going to select all the patches of grass that I want drawn. And I'm just going to show you the super simple way, straightforward. I just want to jump in and paint some grass. You just select the ones that you want and you start painting here. Now you see that it's really scattered. And the reason why it's really scattered is because I have a density right here and my density is actually pretty low 0 0.05. So we can click here and we can just, let's say do 0 0.7 and you can see I have much denser grass. Okay. Let's say you don't want that grass there and uh, you just want to erase one little patch. You just go to the erase tool and get rid of that. All right. So once we erase, let's just populate this right here with all of them. I want to do a density of one and I need to switch back to my paint. And there you go. We have some nice grass and the reason why this tool is so good is because once you have different types of foliages it will place those foliages for you and it will try to randomize it depending on some parameters that i'm going to show you right now 
So let's say if I go into, let's say if I go into this one right here. So in this one, as you can see, there's a bunch of parameters that we have here. Um, we have uh, the parameters that we're going to mess with are the scaling. The scaling is usually what gives you variation in between the heights. So you always want to keep it uniform because if you change it to somewhere else, then you might start getting some weird stretching here and there that you don't want. But over here, we can set a minimum and a maximum scale. So let's say minimum one, let's say maximum. I'm going to do 10 just to be really exaggerated. And let's see what that gives us. So let's go here. And as you can see, grass is super big, but there's also some smaller chunk of grass. I'm actually going to not make it so exaggerated. So let's do from one to three. So you can actually see what's going on. And as you can see, there's like smaller chunks here next to bigger chunks. So that is the purpose of doing the scaling. Okay. So you can have sort of like a metal, like I've have here, or you can have like really dense grass and you can have, if you want it to be ridiculous, you can have like, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids type of grass. All right, and you could do this if you want even more variation. I could go here and I could like change this. Change this one as well to like five. And I think this one, oh yeah, it's still at 15. So let's switch it to three. And as you can see, we have some nice variation here with the other plants, not only the grass, and it's looking real nice. So we can keep populating it, we can keep painting, or if you are done with that, you can always go to erase and you can erase all that. Now there's a couple of things that you need to take into account when using the foliage tool is that if you're going to erase, uh, whatever you want to erase needs to be already selected. So let's say I unselect this, you're gonna see that I'm erasing everything else but these clumps of grass. So if it's not selected here, it's not going to erase it with these eraser. So make sure you have it selected or if it's not working for you, just make sure you have uh, that checked. All right. Now, very quick and simple. And again, the purpose of these tutorials is that everyone can jump in and start playing with these mega scans, which I think are fantastic. Let's jump into the trees. Like I said in the beginning, there are no fully completed trees that I saw in Quixel Mega Scans, so you can still get them for free. If you go into your Epic Launcher under the Marketplace, you could also find this on the website, and you go under Free, and you go under Permanently Free Collection. If you click that, you're going to be greeted with this right here, and the trees that I'm using for this demo is actually these trees right here. What I did is I just clicked on it, add to project, add it to my project, and it will instantly give you a folder. You could also uh, play with the other ones that are right here. There's a bunch of vegetation, although they also include some vegetation that may be already in the mega scan. The good thing about these trees is they are really realistic and they really go with the mega scan. So this is a good choice if you want to do a forest or any outdoors environment for that matter that it that includes trees. So if we go back here to Unreal, once I've added that to my project, what I'm going to see here in content is this folder right here that says the name of the package that I imported. And what I'm going to want to use is the meshes. They're right here. Uh, let's do half, let's do high. And when it says, you're gonna see that there's a folder these tells you what kind of tree you are going to get. So if you see full, it's a little bit different than half. And you have both high and low. I take it that means high and low poly because the vertex count is actually pretty different. If you see over here. So I'm going to choose high because again, I'm not making a video game. I'm just doing stuff for show for cinematic reasons. But if you're making a video game, you probably want to choose the low portion. Now you could always grab it from here and drop it into the viewport. That's one way to go. 
and I'm gonna put my tree there and as you can see one of the good things about this tree package is it already includes uh, some wind swaying so your trees will move a little bit and that's real nice if you need them to do that uh, but you can place them by hand if you need to or you can have them here in your foliage tool so let me just undo those two and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uncheck all these and I'm going to grab let's say these three I'm gonna check them and I'm going to make by the way I'm using the the curly bracket keys are the shortcuts for the size you could also increase the size over here if you wanted to just like to use the shortcuts so density is going to be super dense so if I just go to paint and I just click you're gonna see there's a bunch of trees just like next to each other and it all all of a sudden got super slow here but let's say density of 0 0.04 just so they are not all stuck together and that looks a little bit better you can even reduce this setting all the way to 0 0.01 and this will give me a more scattered kind of tree and as you can see, a very easy way. I'm sorry, I just saw that, that was a little bit slow. It's because I have the all the settings on high. But as you can see, I have a bunch of trees that I can scatter around. Okay. So I'm just going to undo that before this thing crashes because of so many polygons. Now, before we end this video, this is something that you may run into. So what you're seeing here is a little bit of glitching that's been going on on the landscape and this occurs because we have a displacement map on it there is a quick solution to this so all you have to do is go into landscape and usually once you click on landscape that goes away but as, uh, as soon as i press escape it comes back so you just go into landscape and you're going to find these parameters right here negative z and positive z so i'm just going to type a uh, value here let's say two and once I get out, you're going to see that that glitching doesn't happen anymore. The reason why that glitching happens once you have a normal map there is because of the bounds of the landscape. If the bounds of the landscapes are getting too high with the displacement map, with the tessellation, it's going to start glitching like that. So that's why we need to increase the amount of, I forgot how it's named, uh, Z bounds so you can uh, get rid of that. I just recommend to type a number that is not so high because the higher this is, the slower, the the more resources this landscape is going to start taking. So uh, make sure you just type one value that makes that glitch disappear and nothing too high. OK, and that is it for the foliage. That was a quick little video showing you how to do foliage, how to do how to put trees in with your mega scans. And in the next videos, we're going to get into a little bit more on the composition, how the lighting works here. So you can start composing like really awesome levels here in Unreal with the Megascans. I'll see you in the next video.